Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to make comic books. I've always been a lover of comics, but to create a fully fleshed out comic of my very own has been a dream of mine for years that I just never seemed to get around to. Sure, I made a few poorly conceived comics when I was in elementary and middle school, but they weren't very good. I didn't have a plan of where I wanted to take the stories or characters. I didn't have the motivation to continue developing them, and eventually, I gave up on the pursuit. Over the years, I thought about revisiting the idea several times, starting projects but never finishing them. Like, for example, four years ago, when I first announced in a YouTube video that I was going to make a comic book called Requiem of the Crazies, showing off a few pages that I had drawn. Well, the idea just ended up on the back burner as I followed through with other pursuits that took up my time, like recording albums and making YouTube videos. But over these past four years, that unfinished graphic novel has been floating around in my head, picking at my brain and waiting for its time to get developed. Well, if you haven't noticed, I've been slow to post any new videos on my channel. But not because I've given up on YouTube, and not because I'm dead. No, I've just been in a hiatus to focus my efforts on finally getting this comic series on the roll. And so, the Requiem of the Crazies graphic novel is the next big project that I'm turning my attention to. Currently, I have a story outline for 8 issues planned out, about 30 to 40 pages an issue. And over these past few weeks, I've written out the entire first issue. Requiem of the Crazies is a tale of two bums, Dante and Vernon, who uncover a dark reality about the urban homeless community they live in. Mainly that, it's being controlled by a sadistic, insane cult leader who is manipulating the minds of the homeless and coercing them into doing his nefarious bidding. As the series goes on, Dante and Vern fall further and further down the rabbit hole that is the winding shady back streets and alleyways of the city, encountering the evil plots set forth by their wicked overlord, drug contaminated water and food supplies, police corruption, satanic gangs, and of course, cannibalism. Our protagonists will have to face it all, issue by issue. Or so that's my goal anyways. This is the first time as an adult that I've actually tried developing a comic series. So every step of the way is a new challenge that I have to tackle. I dug up the original nine pages I started all those years ago and began figuring out what to do next. What mistakes should a novice like me know to avoid? Should I self-publish or should I try to get the project picked up by an established comic publisher? How do I turn this into this? There were so many questions that I didn't have a clear answer to, and I knew that I needed the help of an expert to guide my novice soul. So after watching tons of YouTube videos by people who made their own comics, I finally came across Doug Tenaple. Doug is an Eisner Award-winning animator and graphic novelist, known for his incredibly popular creation, Earthworm Jim. Well, Doug's been working on a new independent graphic novel and making YouTube videos showing the step-by-step -step process of its development. On his channel, he runs The Doug Show. Oh, it's The Doug Show. Where he has conversations with musicians, graphic novelists, film industry veterans, and even YouTubers. So I knew that I had to get on the show and ask him all of the questions that I had about comic book making. After reaching out to him on Twitter, Doug was gracious enough to have me on for a two-hour stream, which I urge you all to go to his channel and watch the full version of. Let's talk graphic novels. This might be a much bigger project than I was expecting. It is, uh, it is life consuming. It seems like it. It's you, you either dive in and do it or you don't. But for the first book, I would just jump on your excitement and get to work, e even before you've developed your style, let's say. Right. And don't be precious about it. You're, you'll be very lucky if you write something good the first time. I think that I have enough of an outline skeleton that I can yeah. write out the issue and then go from there. That's probably a good plan. That's what I'm doing for Bigfoot Bill. Usually I, I, I wrote a, a pretty detailed outline mm -hmm. that covers the whole arc. So that would be all of your all of your issues. And then I, I'm only formally writing one book at a time. You, you have to develop a work ethic. Right. So it's not going to work if you just do it when you feel like it. So after taking some time to write out a loose outline for the entire series story and having the first 35 pages fully written out in a notebook, the next clear step was, of course, to draw the damn thing. But that's easier said than done. Looking back at my old pages, I remember the pitfalls I encountered. First being that, while I think that I'm an okay artist, I am incredibly slow at drawing. 
I had gone several months without ever drawing anything at all. And unlike riding a bike, you can forget how to do it. So drawing slow is fine. Um, I know guys that can only pencil one page a day and they ink a, a page the next day. That's what I consider pretty slow. And I think you'd probably do faster than that. Well, I'm definitely a little slower than that. With planning out the page outline, penciling, inking, and then watercoloring, it usually takes me around three days a page. And since I spend so much time and am so used to editing on the computer, I found myself trying to click an invisible undo button, only to remember that it doesn't exist in traditional media. So I decided to switch things up a bit and invested in an iPad, a good stylus, and a program called Procreate, which allows me a lot of freedoms to change brushes, plan out my pages, and of course, undo my mistakes. So I'm using an iPad now, which has an undo feature sure. that I really like. It's a bad habit, but sure. And I, I do have digital books. I have, I think, four or five dig, four digital books and the rest are traditional. So I, I'll do both. And I think you should get good at both because your, your analog drawing will make you a better digital artist. While I do enjoy the ease of drawing the comic on the iPad, there are still pros and cons that come along with both digital and traditional medias. The first nine pages I did traditionally on 11 by 17 inch comic board using pencils, erasers, ink pens, and brushes. Drawing on these big pages allows for you to scan it into a computer and then shrink it down to standard comic page size while preserving all the detail of the larger drawing. Whereas on the tablet, I can set up an 11 by 17 inch canvas already set to full print resolution, where I can plan out the page, pencil, ink, and color directly. I've been experimenting with both so far, doing some chapters traditionally and some digital. While on the iPad, I can color each page in different layers with ease, I found that I had more control doing ink washes and watercoloring when using traditional paper. But this is where I realized that I had made a big mistake because I had done the washes and color directly over my original inked pages, which greatly limits the ability to edit the pages after scanning it into the computer and putting it into Photoshop. Now, what I should have done would be to, well, I don't know. Let's ask Doug. You know, there's a, there's a lot of ways to crack that nut, right? You could, I, the most dangerous way would be to actually do the wash on the page. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Or I could scan it and print it out and do a wash on a separate piece of paper. So I have a backup. I, I, if I was starting, if I was you starting and you don't want to put a bunch of money into it, I would not do color because you can always color it someday. But black and white makes you draw better because you realize you're not re relying on a colorist to fix everything or to put in the detail. If you have to figure it out as a black and white standalone piece, I think your design will be better. Drawing solely in black and white is something that I'm always practicing to get better at. While I do enjoy colored pages, I find it to be incredibly fascinating when an artist can portray a scene using solid black and white contrast. But I know that I'm not there at this point yet. I still feel like the use of ink washes and color helped to fill in all the dead space of my panel composition. So despite it costing more to print, I want to plan for this first issue to be in color. But once I complete the entire first issue, I have to figure out the best way to print and market this comic. Originally, my goal was to try to get the comic picked up by a publishing company like Image, Slave Labor, or really anyone who'd be interested in my project at all. But the more I talked to Doug Tenaple and other independent comic creators like Robin and Neil McCammon, who self-published their comic series, Don't Fear Dawn, it seemed like going the independent route made the most sense. I mean, hell, I've been self-publishing my music for years. Is there any benefit with going with a publisher, like Image, for example? I really don't believe in that you need a publisher with the internet and with and with self-publishing now. So if you look at what I do with Bigfoot Bill just recently, I'm, I've come full circle. So I've had all these publishers and and big books and stuff, and I'm back to just publishing it myself, which anyone could do what I'm doing. I just went on Indiegogo and raised a hundred. I'm up to one hundred and eight thousand dollars, I think, which is more money than I've made on any book. And it's independent, which is what I'm going to recommend to you also is because you have so much um, a, a internet presence that monetizing that for your book will be, I think, the right route to do. 
So with Doug's Indiegogo campaign for his upcoming graphic novel, Bigfoot Bill, he was able to get $127,000, almost 700% of his original goal of around $18,000. And while I'm not an Eisner award-winning graphic novelist like Doug, and don't expect to reach funding that high, I do think that going the Indiegogo route to fund this comic book is the smartest way to go. Now, normally a project like this would come completely out of pocket, and I would have to make the money back through eventual sales of the comic. Yet through Indiegogo, not only does it allow for the project to be fully funded before it's even completed, but it does it in a way that gives special perks and rewards to backers. So I set up my Indiegogo campaign page for Requiem of the Crazies issue 1. I'm asking a modest $1,800, which covers the printing and shipping materials for 1,000 copies. If my project gets funded higher than that, then of course I can print more copies. I'm not going to officially launch my campaign until next Monday. I'll have a separate video made for its official launch date. So this will give any of you potentially interested backers time to see what kind of perks that you can get for your contribution if you decide to fund this project. I'm offering everything from signed copies of the comic, posters, personally drawn sketches, and even having your name printed in the back of the book on a special thank you page. So by funding the Indiegogo, it gets you cool rewards and helps to get this project completed. So here's just a quick recap of my comic and goals. Requiem of the Crazies, issue one, will be about 35 pages long, and I'm planning on an eight issue series. As of now, I have 20 pages nearly completed. I might change some of the colors or dialogue on the final project. But you can read the first three chapters on my website through the link below. If you're interested and want to join my Indiegogo campaign, go ahead and sign up now. Check out my page and be on the lookout for my video announcing the official launch date, which will be on Monday, December 10th. Once it launches, you can pick your donation tier and make your contribution. It's going to take me a few more months to finish the comic, have it finalized, printed, and ready to ship out. So I'm planning to have it completed and ready to ship by the end of March of 2019. Listen everyone, I'm just really excited to finally be making this comic. I've already had some sort of moderate success on YouTube and with my music, and so I'm hoping that I can do something with this comic that you will all love. I want to give a big thank you to Doug Tenaple for helping me get to this point with his advice. Seriously, everyone, go subscribe to Doug Tenaple and help give his channel a boost. And when you do, tell him that Rusty sent you. Also, a big thank you to Robin and Neil McCammon, you can check out their comic, Don't Fear Dawn, through the links below. And finally, a big, big thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. I know I haven't been posting very often, and so I want to make it up to you. So for everyone who supports me on Patreon, I'll be offering early access to each of the comic pages once they get completed, as well as sending out copies of the comic once it finally prints. Ladies and gentlemen, Requiem of the Crazies, the comic book about the story of the insane world of the bums, is coming soon. So be on the lookout this coming Monday for my official video announcing the launch of my Indiegogo campaign. Thank you all for watching, and stay tuned. There have been just millions of writers and artists in the world, but there hasn't been a Rusty Cage one yet, and we need to find out what's rolling around in your head. So whatever comes out, is pretty important, first of all. And, th and that's, all, that's as unique as your signature. We need to see what's in your head. You just got to get that down.